when we talk about epidemiology, very specific to intubation in the United States, we're taking a look at age and mortality in this graph. As people get older, as seen in the gray line with the, uh, with the gray circles, we can see that as we get older, the likelihood of being intubated grows ever stronger. And very specifically, after the age of 45, it's a very steep climb beyond that. So those 45 years of age and older have a greater chance of being intubated in life than certainly anybody prior to the age of 45. Makes sense, right? Most of the diseases that we know that occur in adulthood occur after the age of 45, stroke included. So now when we consider mortality, mortality risk relative to intubation is a linear curve, meaning that the dark line with the triangles that plot for each age climb equally between ages birth all the way to senescence with a slight greater climb after the age of 70. Where the two lines meet at about the age of 70 to 75, you can see that the mortality rate almost equals that of the incidence rate of intubation. It's not suggesting that those who are intubated will never come off the tube and will die ultimately. It's just to say that incidence is far greater of death in those who are older and go on endotracheal intubation. So turning our focus a little bit to the dysphagia associated with acute, care, acute respiratory failure, we see that more than 48 hours of intubation leads to more than 50% of those with dysphagia once the endotracheal tube comes out. Within those, 50% of those patients are aspirating. Going even further than that, almost 50% of the aspiration is silent. So in all, this is a very considerable issue and something that desperately needs to be addressed and certainly relative to the literature that I will present very shortly. Mm -hmm.